Okay, so in this video, we're going to do record the recursive version of integration map path, which basically is a version of integration map path where you start off by by calling the thing you're trying to the express the integral you're trying to catch it as i, and then you use integration map path, and then you see that i appears again on the on the right side when you're simplifying, and and then you you rearrange, do some linear uh equation solving and get the value of i. Now notice you should not use you should not confuse this with the circular trap. Where the circular trap is you sort of end up integrating what you originally differentiated and get back. So that doesn't give you any information whereas this actually does give you new information. So let's do sine square x. So there's three examples I'm going to do sine square x is the first one. So I write a sine x times sine x. Now which of these should I take as the part to integrate and which should I take as the part to differentiate? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter because they're the same thing. So, so I will take the sine x as a part to integrate. So I'll get sine x times negative cosine x minus the integral. What's the derivative of sine? Cosine. Cosine x. times negative cosine x dx. Be very careful about the plus and minus signs. So this becomes all right here minus sine x cosine x plus integral of cosine square x dx. Okay? Now, now, now this, this is the part where we, where we use a trick. We write cosine square x in terms of sine square. What's the relationship? 1 minus sine square. So, cosine square is 1 minus sine square. So, so, this is minus sine x cosine x plus integral 1 minus sine square x dx. So, what you get is you get that i, which is just the left side here, is minus sine x cosine x plus the integral of 1 dx. What's the integral of 1 dx? x. x minus the integral of sine square x dx. What's the integral of, of sine square x dx? i. i. Actually, this is a little, I'm um, being a little uh, sort of not quite rigorous because there's no single integral of sine square. There's a bunch of integrals. They're all related by con additively by constants. I'm just taking the particular choice of integral i where where this holds and there's no plus c's. So there's a little little uh, sort of I'm I'm sort of skipping a little step, but I'm just I'm just putting it assuming that the additive constants don't actually cause any problem here. Okay. So I got i because that's so I got the x from integrating one and I got the i by integrating sine square x. So therefore you get and you now you now you can rearrange. So what you get, you get two i is I'll just rewrite these so I don't have a minus set up front. Okay, so I get what's the integral i or oh, that's just integral sine square x dx is what? One half. Okay. One half of x minus sine x cosine x. Plus C. C. Well, plus C would be if you write in the general integral. This particular one is just actually this, but now if you write the general one, you'll get plus C. I, I picked I to be the one which is, which is the, the particular one where you, where this holds exactly. If I pick some other integral, there would be a constant of. Okay. Okay. So, that's good. So that we, we got the, we got our first example. Okay, let's do the next one. It's a little trickier. So let's, and I'll, I'll use the letter i again, but the, the new i won't be the same as the old i. So integral of secant cubed third power of the secant function. Okay. Now, I want to write secant cubed as a product of two things, one of which can be differentiated and the other one can be integrated. Well, actually, 
one of them is nicer to integrate and the other one is not so nice to integrate so we'll differentiate that instead so i'm going to write a secant x times secant square x now which of these do you think we should integrate Well, what's the integral of secant? It's some log secant plus tangent. What's the integral of secant squared? Tangent. So which one's nicer to integrate? The second one. The secant squared. So I'm going to integrate this one. So this is going to be secant x times tangent x tan x minus the integral what's the derivative of secant there is secant is secant tangent that's just the derivative of this thing times i then have to multiply by this this piece okay so this is secant x oh second so write the first step. so secant x tan x minus integral secant x tan square x okay now we can rewrite tan square x so remember you should i uh, almost forgot this but you should always remember to copy down this term the one without the integral sign So you can read a tan square x as as what? Secant x square minus one. Okay. So key remember you have to keep copying down this term. Uh, now this becomes secant cubed x dx plus secant x dx so we get i equals secant x tan x minus i, I plus natural log of secant x plus tangent x tangent x so now you rearrange So, and then you can bring the 2 down, and then if you write the general one, you'll have to put a plus c. So, integral secant cubed x is just check that's right. Okay, so it's secant times tangent plus natural log of secant plus tangent over 2 plus c is just the, the constant. Then. So then let's look at the third example we have here. Okay, and that is e to the x times cosine x. Now it's up to you which one you take as to differentiate which one take to integrate, but you should be consistent. So I'll just take e to the x as the part to integrate throughout. The exponential is always the one to integrate. You just need to be consistent. Otherwise, you risk the if you if you integrate something and then differentiate back, what happens? Circular trap. You are in the circular trap. You just end up getting no information. So I'm going to take e to the x as the part to integrate. So this will be cosine x times e to the x minus what's the derivative of cosine negative sine okay and so i can make that cosine x times e to the x plus integral e to the x sine x dx now what do i take as the part to integrate yeah. E to the x. Same thing, right? Otherwise, I get the circular trap. So, 
and remember I have to keep copying down this term. So now what do I get? So I get sin x times e to the x minus cosine x e to the x dx. Okay, what is this? This is again i. So what I get is, and that's assuming that I picked the i such that. So it's cosine x plus sine x e to the x minus i. So you get 2i is cosine x plus sine x times e to the x. So you get integral e to the x cosine x dx is So you get cosine x to sine x e to the x over 2 plus c. Now, if you want to check this, remember e to the x times anything, when you differentiate, you'll get e to the x times that plus its derivative. So, uh, so you get e to the x times this plus minus sine x plus cosine x. The sine minus and cancel, cosine will get. So you can, you can differentiate this in the product root and check that you get exactly, exactly this expression. So, so let's just recap what are the ways we used, uh, the, Integration by parts recursive. One was just a straight, one of the trigonometric ones. In the trigonometric ones, we, we used integration by parts just once in both these cases, but we also used a trigonometric identity, right? We use a trigonometric identity here and we use a trigonometric identity here, right? So it was integration by parts combined with a trigonometric identity and then we got the repeat thing and then we, uh, we equated. In the exponential times trigonometric, we didn't end up needing any trigonometric identities, but we did have to use integration by parts. How many times? We used it first here, and then again we used it on. So you use integration by parts twice. Okay, so you may have to use integration by parts twice and then do the recursive thing, or you may just have to use it once, but also need to use some trigonometric identity, or maybe you can do some combination, right? So these are just three standard examples, which are pretty hard to do without. Now, with sine square, actually, you can, there's another way of doing the integration using a double angle formula, and you can actually check that, that you get the same answer with that other method of integration. Uh, but we're not doing that right now. So, in a future video, or uh, in other videos, we'll talk about other strategies for integration by parts and, and with composite functions, etc.